You've beat Fallout 4 in hard, you've beat Fallout 4 in legendary, you've beat Fallout using my impossibly difficult mod setup. You think you're some hot shit, don't you? You think you're the best thing that's ever stepped foot in the commonwealth. Well, think again, son, because I'm about to make it even more difficult. But you know what's not difficult? Choosing Forge and Foster for your next watch. Or for a Christmas gift, check out the ghost. You can see all the way through it, right through the back. And that's about the coolest thing ever. It looks fantastic up close. Even from far away, I was shocked to see how good it looked on video. It stands out. It has such presence. It looks expensive, but it's actually very affordable. And you can get it for 15% off using my code MXR. There's a link down below. Let's have a recap, shall we? First, we disabled your ability to ever pause the game. Whether it be Pip-Boy, lockpicking, whatever. Then we gave you a new death sound because you're gonna be dying a lot. <laughs> Why not, you know, enjoy it with some melodious, filthy frank? Also, we made it longer for more enjoyment. <laughs> Then we made it necessary to always be wearing a gas mask that you need to maintain by changing out filters, wiping clean, and repairing when damaged. Then we made rat storms really common and also incredibly deadly. We made it a necessity to keep yourself always clean by taking baths for realism and nothing else. We added thousands of new spawn points using War of the Commonwealth. We gave them the ability to follow you wherever you go by removing combat boundaries. We made sure that nowhere was safe by allowing them to track you down and attack you randomly. We made them smarter through arbitration. We made injuries life-threatening and non-recoverable through agony. Now it's time to continue down our path of making Fallout 4 the number one game from Masochist with six additional mods. Let's get into it. First off, we're gonna give ourselves a new winter aesthetic. The last build was kind of a horror survival game. This one is more like a winter survival game. Everything's gonna be white. It's gonna snow a lot. The character's gonna look like Shadow Mario. The 75 bikini mods you have loaded aren't gonna be very immersive here. I mean, you can still put them on, but seriously, not a great idea here. The other major downside, besides having your 69 bikini armors out of commission, is that interiors will also be covered in snow. Let's just pretend that this is a kind of special institute snow that, you know, penetrates interiors and gets everywhere. Now that's all visual, but now it's time to feel the effects of that snow by getting Fallout 2287 Nuclear Winter. Now besides some cool frosty aesthetics like snow shaders and visible breathing to immerse yourself in the world, the main thing this mod adds is temperature that you can keep track of in a widget that you can move below your gas mask widget. Along Alongside wind speed and ambient temperature that of course varies depending on time of day and weather and if you know how life works when it's cold and windy outside your body temperature goes down and if you know how life works that typically results in hypothermia and then severe hyperthermia and then something you might have not known paradoxical undressing. Wait, this is actually very real. I did some research and it's not just a perverted excuse to finally be able to use your 69 bikini mods you have on deck. And of course, as we tragically learned last time when taking a bath, removing your gas mask will result in a swift and timely death. <laughs> But of course, you can just find an interior. But wait, because of your conditions, you can no longer run or sprint. You walk slower and your aim stability is off. That's right, I'm not moving my mouse at all. All right, let me just get into, oh fuck, all right, that's not an interior. Nope, not this one. How about this one? Nope, come on, Bethesda. I know you know how to make interiors. All right, guess I'm gonna just die. Oh look, it's a set of, oh, I'm dead. Now obviously heat sources will give you some relief as well as freshly cooked food 20 minutes after cooking. Unfortunately, your water will actually freeze if you're below temperature for a certain period of time. You're gonna have to avoid water at all costs. Fortunately, there are lots of bridges around and actually you're supposed to avoid water anyways because of the radiation. And you're gonna have to spend some time finding warm clothing. In fact, you can actually open an interface and it'll tell you how warm everything is in the game. And these are just more things that you're gonna have to keep an eye on now. Now that we have a new environment, more things to keep track of, it's time to make Fallout 4 a little bit more realistic using immersive Fallout. First of all, movement is now a lot slower for humans. You can actually now feel some weight and momentum to your movement. Compared to before, where it felt like an arcade shooter where you can zigzag around, dodge everything,
saying, this isn't Mario, this is real life. You're up against giant mutant lizards, which now also move faster, like giant mutated lizard dragons should, and super mutants with all of their muscle mass and power can now come barreling towards you, along with their hounds. And that's a great thing, because vanilla death claws were ridiculously easy to evade in the vanilla game. Now, you feel the sense of helplessness that you probably wanted to feel that sounds really, really kinky against the Death Claw. Power armors for essentially being giant slates of steel weighing upwards of 500 kilograms move surprisingly fast and now they don't. Fortunately though, heavier weapons are going to be a lot more manageable in heavy power armor. And here's something you might not have noticed, first person shooting mechanics in Fallout 4 are way too easy, and you probably don't know why. And it's because Bethesda implemented a recoil recovery mechanic. That's right, Bethesda thinks they're all a bunch of pussy bitches that can't handle a real first person shooter. And so they made the gun automatically go back to the position you're originally aiming at, essentially making recoil a non factor and for the game we're trying to make, that's gonna be a no from me, dog. So not only did he make guns recoil more, but now you're also gonna have to be a man and handle your own recoil without the help of some computer assistance. And furthermore, he felt that Fallout's original OST didn't feel hopeless or sad enough, so he added his own music. And it's really, really sad and unsettling. goes really, really well with my anime intro opener screen. It literally sounds like the whole entire Stark family is about to be murdered right now. Now you're probably saying, Psh <laughs> Do you know who I am? I was triple X elite killer 69 XXX. I'm a trick shotter. I don't care. As long as I got my gun and ammo, I'm all good. Well, now you don't. With the mod Loot Logic and Reduction, mod that aims to make everything useful that you're ever gonna need to survive incredibly rare so that you don't survive. This includes things like ammunition, right? Not everything on the face of this planet is gonna contain ammo now. Like mongrels and other creatures, like why, you know? Why would they? You're gonna find less ammo in general and even less for rarer types of ammo. Which means every bullet you fire from your gun, you better make count. It's gonna be like fucking Metro. Ammo's gonna be like currency. You're gonna find yourself switching weapons more to really maximize each of their strengths and weaknesses and finding more creative ways of dispatching your enemies besides using bullets. Bobby pins are gonna be more rare, making ammo collection even tougher. Stim packs, which are basically handed out like candy from suspect vans, are now rarely found in first aid kits and other containers. So you can no longer rely on just magically stabbing yourself with a needle over and over. Now that you're crippled in pretty much the most realistic way possible, it's time to beat you while you're down. Literally, with the mod, Unarmed Gameplay Overhaul. Now this is the most recent mod and probably the most unfair one so far. Everything else is realistic and kind of fair, and it's essentially going to turn all of your enemies into jujitsu masters, trained in the art of taking you down. Pretty much every single unarmed animation or kill move will be able to be performed by any humanoid NPC quite frequently. Even the ones that used to require sneak, now don't. And with the game we're trying to build here being taken down, which, like I said, will happen frequently, it will pretty much be a death sentence, as it gives time for more people to pile in and basically trap you in a never-ending jujitsu match but it's not you who's doing anything it's everybody else and this is kind of technically realistic and it's certainly one of the first things people do in close range is try to take you down and yeah this mod is supposed to give you the ability to do it but it only happens in the third person due to limitations so for the most part it's gonna be your enemies doing it and so not only is it tougher to shoot your opponents tougher to keep your distance, but when they do close the distance, it's pretty much fucking game over for you. Now that your death is 
virtually guaranteed. I'm just gonna keep making more difficult on you. I, we're, we're going in dry, okay? We're going in dry. We've added more spawn points and we've made enemies smarter, but we've never added new types of enemies and bosses that work together to make your life a living nightmare. And it's called the Deadly Commonwealth Expansion. Well, that's gonna overhaul every major enemy faction in base Fallout 4 with new variants, as well as a ton of new bosses scattered around the Commonwealth. Go to any of these X's if you dare. You're gonna be seeing all kinds of new enemies rushing up to you, dressed in wild gear, holding weapons you don't remember vanilla enemies ever holding. Whoa, 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 what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? And not only are these enemies tougher, have far better equipment, but they're also pretty much built with arbitration AI inside of them. These are not your vanilla enemies. These are fucking Japanese kamikaze planes in World War II. For fuck's sake, man, stop. Stop, please. Can you just stop setting me on fire for one sec? Do you ever reload? And because of the arbitration like AI, these guys will literally follow you to the end of the map. I brought them all the way to a settlement and they waged war against my essential settlers for like 20 minutes and still won. I, I really don't know how. I legit just left, fast traveled to Cor Vega. They fast traveled with me. This is wrong, all right? This is so wrong. Running like a little bitch into Cor Vega, you know, that like level five dungeon, like the second dungeon you ever walk into was an irreparable mistake. I believe someone actually counted and there are like 47 enemies in there. Overkill much? Not for this game, baby. Needless to say, Jesus is gonna have to take the wheel from there. But MXR, I'm fucking solid snake. N not literally fucking solid. I am Splinter Cell. I don't need to fight these people. I can just pick them off, run away, reset it all, come back. It's too easy. And that's where you're wrong. Because I also included search and destroy extended combat range and stealth searches now while arbitration does increase the stealth detection range by two times and four times for outside it doesn't increase the length of time they search for allowing for more solid snake slash metro gameplay to be more viable while also making it harder to exploit how fucking stupid a lot of the vanilla npcs are in addition these effects actually even happen when you're not in combat so be prepared for more multiple violent sneak attacks on you while you're outside. In fact, the range is so large that enemies will actually spot you before you even show up on their compass, which goes pretty well if no place is safe. So not only will you have stalkers, even people who aren't trying to stalk you will just know where you are due to their newly improved senses. So sure, you might be good at the game, but what happens when they sneak up on you and you can't run away and they use their expert jujitsu moves on you and you have no ammo and you're freezing? What if you're bleeding from Agony. What if your mask is broken and you're suffering from rats? It's game over, right? It's over for you. Anyways, try this out for yourself. Let me know how long you last. Maybe I'll actually make a video about actually trying to attempt to beat the game with these mods on. Let me know if you want to see that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Looking for some cheap games? Check out G2A.com and use the code MXR to get 3% cash back. Link down below.